what is going on in the world well white people are smart and black people are dumb and there's absolutely no way that black people could be smarter than white people Welcome back guys, what up? My name is Sarah Garvey. Like, share, comment and subscribe as we get into this. Now, we have been told a lot of stuff throughout the history of the world. But the question is, is it correct or is it a lie? Now, disclaimer, I'm making this video not because I think that any particular race is better than another race. I'm making this video to actually show that we've all been lied to to some degree. So what we're going to do is we are going to look at Neil deGrasse Tyson. Now, who is Neil deGrasse Tyson? For those who don't know, he is a black astrophysicist and historian, a very intelligent man. And he goes into what black people were seen as and what white people were seen as on the Joe Rogan show. Now, if you've been hiding under a rock, you don't know who Joe Rogan is. However, he was on the show and he had this to say about African people. There's a section here on race and color, which is another thing with the, the variation of what we have in the world. Just a, a point I wanna make, when European anthropologists started running through Africa and started describing what they saw, um, their urge was to say, everyone in Africa is this thing, and they have dark skin, woolly hair, and that is a thing. And they called it a race, and they called it the Negroes, okay? And this is our attempt to classify into few categories something that might actually, in real life, be on a spectrum. We know that the human species began in Africa. And everybody who populates everywhere else in the world came out of Africa to do that. Now, this is something that is known and not known. All evidence that is scientific, whether it be genetic or anthropological or archaeological, shows that Africans are the first human beings on the planet. Yes, religious people will have something else to say about that. I get it. However, Neil deGrasse Tyson is going from a purely scientific basis. So let's continue. What that tells you is that the genetic diversity within Africa as the origin of our species is greater than it is between any other two people anywhere else in the world. But because the anthropologists were not thinking genetic diversity, they're thinking skin color. They put them all in one bin. But if you have the most genetic diversity, then in practically every way humans vary, you would find the extreme of that in the African continent. Where would you find the tallest people in the world? Watusi tribe of Africa. How about the shortest people in the world? Pygmies. The pygmies. Not even that far away. Right. Geographically. They have the same skin color, so the Europeans said these are one group of people, one race. Um, where might you find the slowest people in the world? Well, no one looks for them. Where would you find, there's no races to find the slowest people. How about the fastest people? Africa. Okay. People of African descent have dominated the long distance as well as the sprint to completely different physical abilities. Oh, but they're all dark skinned people. They're all Negroes. Okay. Where would you likely find the dumbest person in the world? Africa. How about the smartest person in the world? Africa. How about the Egyptians? The From Europeans Africa. did not look for people smarter than they were. Okay. And to this day, where they find evidence where that might have been the case, you have people saying aliens did it. So this is something that I found within my own research as a black man who has studied 
black history and African history for 10 years. Whenever anthropologists or historians come up against something that is black and intelligent, they find a way in which to seek for answers outside of the obvious. So like Neil deGrasse Tyson said here, oh look, it's aliens. It cannot be these dumb black peoples. It must be something else. It must be someone else. And we're going to go into that a little bit. But let's continue. Egypt is, of course, in Africa. Yeah. A brilliant civilization. Oh, my gosh. While Europeans were still either disemboweling heretics or whatever the hell they were doing, I was even before that, uh, thousands of years ago. So my point is, if you don't look for it and you don't find it and you're going to create a map of humans of the world, you're going to put yourself at the top. That's what you're going to do. And you're going to write things like this. Uh, who do you want to hear from? Thomas Jefferson or Francis Galton? Jefferson. Jefferson. 1785. Speaking of the Negroes. Comparing them by their faculties of memory, reason, and imagination, it appears to me that in memory, they are equal to the whites. In reason, much inferior as I think one could scarcely be found capable of tracing and comprehending the investigations of Euclid. And in imagination, they are dull, tasteless, and anomalous. What, what is Euclid? I honestly don't know how many Euclid-fluent white people Jefferson knew in the original Amer American colonies. Euclid invented a geometry. Oh. Okay, Euclidean geometry is ancient Greece, and his books still exist to this day. So he's saying the black slaves don't know Euclid, can't figure out Euclid. <laughs> Upon my studies, I have come across this also. There is a box that people create that other people cannot fit into. And so if you can't fit into that box, then all of a sudden, you are dumb. Okay, so Thomas Jefferson said, look, geometry. There's a guy who studied ge geometry and found Geometry. Look, these black people must be dumb because they could have never done that. However, at the time, the average white person couldn't have done that either. So that is what they call a false argument. It's a false equivalency because so many people at the time, regardless of color, could not have done that. Well, they haven't been educated. <laughs> well, regardless, how many, so how many white farmers... In 1785 USA, also were New Euclid. Yeah, no, zero. Just, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, I, but whatever were his observations and objections to black people, he had no hesitation continually mating with at least one of them, producing six children. Um, so you know what I did here? Uh, oh, oh, then there's a guy who wrote a whole book comparing black people and white people. A book that was used into the 1960s. It was called The Origin of Races by Carlton Kuhn. Um, he wrote, if Africa was the cradle of mankind, which he recognizes, it was only an indifferent kindergarten. Europe and Asia were our principal schools. So this is, these are people putting themselves at the top. He's white, so he's got to put white people at the top. Then I thought, suppose anthropologists were black racists instead of white racists. What would they... Right. What would they come up with? Well, also what he's saying is ridiculous because if, if it's kindergarten, how did they do the pyramids? <laughs> it's, it's the most complex the, structures the, ever known to man. Hold on. So well, we can't reproduce today. No, got, no, it's, All of us. My only point is when you have that mindset and you have to put yourself at the top and all people with dark skin are one entity, you're not looking for people smarter than you. You're not. Uh, there's other evidence here. The, do, do you realize? that the people who get the highest scores on standardized tests in England are, are people, immigrants from the Igbo tribe in Nigeria. And these are, their kids outscore all the, 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 the quote, native white people in the, in the town. If you're not looking for them, you're not finding them. It just doesn't, it's, it's, a, it's a thing. It's all here in this chapter. And all I'm doing is bringing science to it. That's all I'm doing here. So this is what we find. This is not a emotional argument. This is a scientific one. What we can find is that people from the continent of Africa have the most genetically diverse genes upon the planet. 
And so this is not something that is taught. This is not something that is told within schools. We are just told that we have a category of races, not a category of genetic diversity, which is why me as a black man can tell other black people, look, because I know this information, you cannot put me into a box unfortunately a lot of black people think that if you don't fit into their black box then you are not black however my box is my box and i am still black why because blackness is diverse it isn't monolithic okay so what happens is a lot of people black people specifically which is very unfortunate for me is that they think that they can tell other people that they are not black, but that comes from a place of ignorance because they do not know that blackness is so diverse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read from a book that I have read twice over. It is from a book called The African Origin of Civilization, Myth or Reality by Sheikh and to Diop. And to show how the psychology of people can actually go into what they think of people is actually shown within this book. There is an anthropologist at this point in time by the name of Champillion Fignaic and he is a French anthropologist and what he's done is that he's gone to Egypt and as an anthropologist and as a archaeologist he has dug up all of these tombs and dug up all of these things and he keeps coming up with black faces. It just keeps happening frizzy hair, woolly hair and black faces and he can't understand as a white man at that time why he keeps coming up with these black faces when he keeps digging because in his mind black people are less than him he's not looking for people that are smarter than him and if he is they must be white and so as an archaeologist when he writes in his book this is what he actually says Finally, after stating that black skin and woolly hair do not suffice to characterize the Negro race, Champillion Fignaic contradicts himself 36 lines later by writing, Frizzy woolly hair is the true characteristic of the Negro race. He goes so far to say that Egyptians had long hair, that consequently they belonged to the white race. It would appear from that text that the Egyptians were whites with black skin and long hair. Though we may be unaware of the existence of such whites, we can try to see how the author reached that conclusion. What has been said about Ethiopians and Copts shows that their hair may be less frizzy than that of Negroes. Moreover, a black, completely black race with long hair exists. Dravidians considered Negroes in India and whites in South Africa. If you read this book, what you will find is this archaeologist says, Champillion Fignaic, he says that black skin and woolly hair do not suffice for the Negro race. It does not suffice to categorize a Negro. 36 lines later, he says, frizzy and woolly hair and black skin do suffice to categorize the Negro race. So what has happened is his mind cannot get around the fact that these smart black people are actually the reason for these historical monuments, the reason for this historical dynasty and civilization. This is what another white professor had to say about black people in the land of Africa. Count Constantine de Volnay, during a, a trip to Egypt in seven, from eight, 1783 to 1785, said this, and I quote, he says, on seeing that head, what head? The Sphinx of Giza. Typically Negro in all its features, I remembered the remarkable passage of Herodotus. The ancient Egyptians were true Negroes of the same type as all native-born Africans. Just to think that this race of black men today are slaves and the object of scorn, the very race to which we owe our arts, sciences, and even the use of speech. Just to think that the Negro, our subject of scorn, is the reason for art, science, and speech. This was Count Constantine de Volney who actually helped Napoleon in Egypt at that time. 
And this was a historian, this was a white Frenchman who, after his studies, could not believe what he actually found, but at least he was honest enough to say. Now, I, I, I want to ask this question. What would motivate him to say this phrase, typically Negro in all its features? Could it be perhaps this? This was a, an artist's conception, uh, Vivant Dinan, who accompanied Napoleon's army, 1798. This is his artist's conception of the Sphinx of Giza. Before what happened? Before the lips and the nose were shot off by Napoleon's troops. That is verifiable because Dinan was an eyewitness to those lips and no nose, that li the lips and noses, nose being shot off by the soldiers. Why did they do it? We cannot climb into their hearts in the 21st century and figure this out, divine the entrails of frogs and try to figure out why they did it. That's between them and, and God. But what happened, happened. Egypt has always traditionally been given prominence as, as the height of ancient culture. Nubia is now coming into its own and is being understood to be of equal importance. It is different from ancient Egypt, but it is equally important and not just an adjunct to this Egyptian culture. What archaeologists do when they pull material from the ground or when they translate texts, they bring their own cultural baggage to that interpretation and, and the baggage of the times that they live in. And so it's imperative that we go back and continually reassess the, the things that we take as facts. Many of the early archaeologists came to the study of ancient Egypt and ancient Nubia from the perspective of Semitic languages or the study of the Hebrew Bible and it was very important to them to bring Egypt specifically into the sphere of, of biblical studies. And so they had to carve Egypt away from Africa to bring it into that sphere. And the way that they did that was they used race. So these early archeologists effectively made ancient Egypt white in the sense that they made it part of a dominant Western culture, and ancient Nubia was separated from that. It was black. And this was how they took Egypt out of Africa and put it into this, this Semitic sphere, this biblical sphere. We have all been lied to. We have all been misled. The conqueror writes history. And so if you conquer a people, you are in the position to now write the history. As Neil deGrasse Tyson says, a lot of the time, people are not looking for people smarter than them. So you won't find it. Because if you are the conqueror, then obviously you're smarter than the people that you conquered. However, the history, the history shows differently. And I'm actually quite happy that this is coming out into the public eye right now because I actually personally believe as a black person that many black people, once you understand who you are, you know what you must do and you know what you must be. People can no longer tell you who you must be and what you must do. You can decide based off of your own analytical, critical thinking capabilities, what you must do. As black people, you, me, we must all understand that we are not just one thing. We are many things. We are the people from where all humanity came from. And with that, we need to be confident in the fact that that is who we are. I am Sara Garvey. Thank you very much for tuning in. You better like, you better share, you better comment, and you better subscribe because like I said before, we are going to continue to ask the question, what is going on in the world? And as long as the world is as crazy and as weird and as upside down as it is, I will be here asking that question. Take care of yourselves. I will see you on the flip side.